After a truly troubling time in the previous episode, Worthing FC is back. Ben Watson is unbeaten in his first five matches in charge. The goalkeeper is even keeping clean sheets. And I've found out how we can watch matches live. Greetings my excellent friends and welcome back to part 3 of the Director of Moneyball. I am Kirk Sheridan and here you can see this wonderful 5 match unbeaten run that we've been on since Ben Watson took over from Dave Hedges. You saw at the end of the previous episode that remarkable 1-0 victory over Haven't and Waterlooville. A result so significant that it's probably why I'm still in this job right now. And Ben then followed this up with a 2-0 victory over Ebbsfleet. Low XG, but we beat them on possession. We had more shots on target. And another man of the match performance from Jonathan Dinzei. Dinzei opened the scoring with this thumping header from Simpson corner. Simpson starting at left back. And then Sheriff lofted this beautiful ball to Miles Meekums. And uh, unfortunately, their defender, well, unfortunately for them, their defender made a catastrophic error, which I am not complaining about in the slightest. Now, this two-all draw away at Dover was the real sign that Ben is making a big difference to the team's mentality. We had been 2-0 down. If this was two weeks ago, we would have folded completely, but not this time. Unfortunately, this was the match where Harrison Mayle had his real off day on our recent run of form, and you can see that there. That's a goal that I would have expected him to at least get his hands on and obviously then conceded this penalty he did go the right way but we managed to claw our way back into this match uh, capitalizing on a defensive clearance error but a fantastic first time finish from Pierce there and Phillips combining here with Simpson and a spectacular driven cross there which Lewis White managed to put away rescued a point for us and kept that unbeaten run going and that belief, that energy was in full force again against Weymouth. But it was the 93rd minute when Sheriff did that and nearly scored the goal of the season. But Keeley was on hand to knock in the rebound, which secured three points for us. And that means we're now up to 35 points after 24 matches. Now, you might look at this league table and think, well, that's still pretty rubbish, though, isn't it? You're in 14th. And yes, league position is lower than I would like it to be. However, Hampton and Richmond are only two points ahead of us. And we just so happen to be playing them twice in a row after our match in the FA Trophy today. So I think today's going to be a triple match episode. The board and our fans are now simply disappointed rather than devastated at the league position that we're in. And I do think if we can get a decent run under our belt, we will get them back on side. But we're taking a break from the league today and we are playing South End in the FA Trophy. Now, South End are currently 16th in the National League. So they're a tier above us, but they're not doing brilliantly. And in fact, we actually beat them in pre-season. So there is no better game for us to take our seat in the stadium for the first time since we joined Worthing as Director of Football and actually watch this match live. Now, I would like to do a massive shout out to Crankiest Fozzy. Thank you so much for your comment on this. I didn't even know it was possible to be able to watch these matches live. I'm going to show you all now how to do what I've been taught. So, as you know, for us to be able to leave match day in full control of our assistant manager, we have to take a holiday. But if there's another manager in the game world with us, they don't. So if you're playing along with the same kind of save and you would like to be able to watch your matches live as well, go in to the options and add a new manager. Start them unemployed and it doesn't matter what managerial style you choose because you're never actually going to take over a club with them. All you will do is use them to go along and watch the matches for the club you're looking after. So we will start playing and the first thing we shall do is seek out the FA Trophy matches that are happening today. Find the Worthing South End game and click attend. Then we'll switch back to our actual manager. And that will take us into team selection, which obviously we can't get involved with. Now, this will allow me to point out something else that a couple of people in the comments section have asked. 
they've suggested using the instant result button to save going on holiday every time. I have investigated this and unfortunately it's not quite as clean as going on holiday because it does mean I still need to set up the team. I need to pick a tactic and I need to put players in place otherwise I can't do an instant result. So if you really do want your staff to completely take control on match day and play however they want, you do have to go on holiday. So that's what we're doing right now. And if all goes according to plan, we will arrive at Woodside Road to watch the match action in real time. And here we are, Woodside Road, Worthing FC's home ground in all its glory. And we are here watching, well, I say, I say we. The real me is actually off on holiday as planned but the other me is here in the crowd it's a workaround but it does work the first thing we'll do is just set the view up i feel like this tv camera view is probably the closest we're going to get to actually being in a seat on match day we will only go with key highlights of course replays it would be nice to see the supporters perspective behind the goals oh i'm so excited i don't know about you but we're about to see what this team can really do or not. Oh, is that Fonguk there? Number 18 there, I think, is Wesley Fonguk, who we had in uh, in the GTS Culture save last season. I say last season, in, uh, in FM22. If you haven't yet watched that series, go and check it out. So South then get an early wide free kick, which we managed to clear away, and it looks like Barker is going to burst through from midfield. Plays the ball to Phillips, who has acres of space to run into. Can he find Pierce? He does. Pierce manages to take the shot and it goes straight into the hands of the goalkeeper. Oh, I'll tell you what. Here's another thing we will do as well. If you are doing this yourself, remember to set up your match day views on the touchline tablet. There we go. That's how I like mine set up so we can see our formation, their formation, ratings, a little bit of a visualizer and the latest of scores that are going on elsewhere. Half an hour in, we still have the highest XG, but they have a bit more possession. Another deep free kick, which flies over the bar. Very cagey match, this. Not a very exciting one for the home fans, but we've got a corner. What can Simpson do? Whips one in here, Dinsay. Oh, goes back out to Simpson. It's cleared. Barker on the edge of the area. Thunders one over the bar. Nothing comes of it, unfortunately. What an odd position to be in. It's half time and there's nothing I can do. There's, I can't go and have a team talk. I can't really investigate what's been happening in the match particularly. What I can see though is it's really obvious that Ben isn't really rotating the squad very much. Look how tired some of these players are. Harry Phillips, there's no way he's making it through the rest of the match. Oh, our team are just absolutely shattered compared to South End's. It looks like we're now making substitutions. Right, what's happened here? Miles, Meekums and Danny Barker have come off to be replaced by McLeod and Keeley. Pierce out to the left wing. Oh, this is making such a difference as the director of football to be able to see in-game how my assistant manager is setting up the team. I really hope, though, that this doesn't go to extra time because there is no way our players are making it through that unscathed. Racine heads the ball out. It goes back to Fonguk, who lofts the ball over. Looks like their attacker is going to get on the end of this. He does. And, oh, we've given away a penalty. Simpson managed to nick the ball off of the attacker at the first, first time. But then as the ball ran away, he nicked again at the, at the attacker's heels and conceded the penalty. And Mail just looked like he was slowly falling asleep with his attempted save there. Very slow collapse. McLeod steals the ball. What an interception. Keeley manages to head it to Sheriff, who lofts the ball over to Pierce. And the ball is nicked away from Pierce there. But Dinsay manages to keep it active. Maidlin now. Manages to get back on the ball. This is very non-league football, isn't it? It's not exactly very fun to watch. McLeod on the edge of the box. Wow, that would have been quite the goal. Unfortunately, didn't come off. And it looks like that's going to be a lot. Sadly then, a 1-0 defeat. 
at home to South then puts us out of the FA Trophy. But I'm not too fussed about that because that means we've just got the league to concentrate on. And the final tip when you've finished watching your match, take your secondary manager and pop yourself on holiday until your club's next game. Sadly, that was a pretty poor performance against South then. That pe penalty given away by Simpson, <laughs> he got a 5.9 rating. So clearly that left-back slot is still a major problem for us. And Pierce having another one of his completely anonymous games. And I must be honest, given the rules of Moneyball that I am following, I am really, really nervous about Ollie Pierce. He scored 13 goals this season in 18 appearances, which is not too shabby. Look at his XG per 90, it's 0.56. His actual goals per 90 is 0.82. So he is overperforming. He's a he's good. He's a good finisher. But the problem I have is when he's scoring these goals. Because he might well have played 18 matches and scored 13 goals. But if we count up the number of matches he's actually scored in... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Scoring in seven out of 18 games for our lone striker is actually not a good return at all. He's completely padded out his numbers with a hat-trick on the opening day and the five goals against Bashley. He can just completely disappear. 6.2 and a 6.1 in the last two games. 6.2, 6.4, 6.1. So, Ollie, as well as your training, I can't see you being my long-term man up front. Now, I am, of course, very aware that the sixth rule of Moneyball says do not buy strikers unless absolutely necessary. This might be absolutely necessary. So, there we go. New recruitment focus. Looking for a striker who can play any role. I'll be interested to see what the scouts come back with. Aged 20 to 25, minimum three-star current ability and with room to improve. Obviously, I will not be going out and paying over the odds if they come back with free transfers and low reputation players. Great. But I do think we're going to need some options either for the back end of this season, certainly for next. But in terms of next season, I must just show you this. I am very, very, very excited about our 2023 youth candidates. What I'm not sure of, though, is if that's in comparison to the players we currently have, who are all greyed out and actually not genuine new gens at all. So I'm almost certain that all of that youth intake will be significantly better than our current under-18s, who will drift off into the ether. I just really hope they're good long term because obviously rule one is promote youth ahead of transfers. If we can get an outstanding youth prospect up front in this intake, oh, could be the future of the club for the next 10 years. But we now have a whole week off for the players to recover from that FA Trophy match. So barring any last minute hitches, we'll be back on the 26th of December to play Hampton and Richmond. Well, there were no strange shenanigans afoot, so we have returned on Boxing Day with the real Kirk Sheridan at home eating his Christmas Day leftovers while alter ego Sheridan Kirk is here at Woodside Road watching what appears to be an incredibly boring first half of football. Hopefully things will be better in the second half. If all goes according to plan, we could rise up to seventh if all the results go our way. But that is dependent on us scoring a goal. Right, here we go. We have a throw in on the left. Phillips to McLeod, who manages to dodge a tackle. McLeod is racing through to take a shot. And I thought, oh, I thought that was actually going to be a shot on target, but no. But Simpson now to take the corner, floats it across, and it's easily cleared by Hampton and Richmond. Phillips picks up the ball on the edge of the area, hits it back to Racine, it goes to Barker, Dinsay hits a long one. Oh, that is a very, very confident place for a central defender to take a shot from. The ball goes back to Hampton and Richmond. Once again, our defenders stepping forward. They are proving... Oh, the ball is lofted over to Miles Meekums. Can he put one away? No, he can't even hit the target. Oh, we are getting a few opportunities here, but we're just not able to put them away or even test the goalkeeper I wonder if we have yet had a shot on target and this could be oh I'm not feeling positive about this can Simpson no Simpson is no hoping oh 
Stimson, our five foot three inch left back there being done by the... Oh, the right winger, but the goal's ruled out. It must have been that the forward was offside. And he was. Oh, very, very clearly offside. 14 shots we've had and only one on target. Come on, let's test the keeper at least once before the end of this match. McLeod plays it back to Dinze, who lofts it over. Lewis White is clear. He heads it for some bizarre reason, rather than trying to take the shot on himself. What a crazy decision that was. Hampton and Richmond are on the attack, and I'm not feeling good about this. Whittingham's going to shoot one from the edge of the area. Oh, my word. Harrison Mayle managed to save a rebound with the back of his head there. Not the kind of thing you see every day in a football match. The ball came off the post, bounced back onto Harrison Mayle's head, and then clear. But Hampton and Richmond are getting in behind again. Then Wigan cuts inside. Is he going to take a shot? Are we going to get the ball back? Come on, boys. Oh, this is so much more nerve-wracking watching the match in full highlights. Much more immersive, obviously. It looks like a good Boxing Day crowd here, actually, at Woodside Road. Oh, right, Racine. Manages to cut the ball out. Miles Meekins. Oh, Pierce. Pierce is through. Pierce, come on. Have one of your good days. Oh, it's just into the side netting. If he'd only taken it on a little further, he might have hit the target. Well, I can't be entirely displeased with that performance. We did manage 16 shots against a team seven places above us in the league, who I believe before this match were also unbeaten in their previous five league games. So it certainly could have been worse. We've climbed a little higher up the table. We're in 13th place now on 36 points. Three off of the playoffs. We now need to go away to Hampton and Richmond. And that might be slightly tougher. Not as if to prove that this away game is going to be a little bit tricky. On the morning of the match, it's just been announced that Hampton and Richmond's manager has won the Manager of the Month award. 75% win ratio. Ben Watson, though, third place, not bad. And I do remember what happened when Dave Hedges won the Manager of the Month award. Everything for us went horribly wrong. So here's hoping we can do exactly the same thing to Gary McCann and Hampton and Richmond. Well, we didn't beat them, but we didn't lose either. Another draw, this time one all. They open the scoring with... Oh. Harrison, you should not be getting beaten from there. But Miles Meekham's floated one in. Maidlin with the assist here, perhaps. Oh, unlucky for the defender there. Maidlin, I'm not sure if he was attempting the cross or the shot, but it deflected onto the head of Pierce, who managed to tap it away. And that keeps us within three points of the playoffs, and we've pulled a little bit further away from the relegation zone in the process. So Ben Watson's Worthing are now unbeaten in their last six Vanarama South matches, having been in terrible form prior to that. Our next match in January is Welling at home who are in 20th, Eastbourne Borough at 18th, Chippenham 24th, Dartford in 12th. We could be in the playoffs by the end of January. We have to believe the way that we're playing. This has got to be possible. We have 20 matches left. We're out of the FA Cup. We're out of the FA Trophy. We don't need to worry about that. It's all about the league. And we're currently on the second longest unbeaten streak in the division. With a bit more strength in depth in key positions, we can definitely push up the table and challenge for those playoffs. So that's the aim for the next episode. We will return at the end of February to play Dulwich Hamlet and Hungerford, by which point I hope to be in the playoff spots, or at least pushing very, very closely. I hope you will join me again soon for that episode. If you've enjoyed this one, please drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. And of course, click your notifications on to find out the second that the next part drops. In the meantime, be excellent to each other as always. I'm Kirk Sheridan. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.